Now in New South Wales, foreigners could be forced to pay more tax to buy property in the state. This is under a proposal being floated by the Treasurer. Joining me live now is the Fairfield City Mayor, Frank Carboni. Frank, great to see you. It's been Morning. a while since we spoke, actually. Um, there's a yes. lot of kind of uh, ideas being thrown around. You've spoken in the past about how many new migrants you've settled in your area over uh, the last couple of years. What do you think of this idea? Well, this is something actually I proposed at a recent forum, and that is that we've got to, we've got to understand the difference between migrants and foreign foreign buyers. Foreign foreign buyers actually purchase homes; they are not Australian citizens. Um, they might simply have a visa to stay here for a short time, uh, and they occupy these homes, and, or they purchase these homes. They might stay empty. Uh, there's thousands of them every year that get purchased, and re in realism, they're actually buying these properties to actually make a few dollars to. Uh, to, to to ride the wave of the housing uh, of the housing profits, if you want, in in cities like Sydney and Melbourne and and, and other major cities, and um, we shouldn't be allowing foreigners to purchase homes um, just so they can make a few dollars. Um, homes are here for people to live in, mm. and uh, I think they should restrict uh, foreign ownership of homes, especially during the housing crisis, yeah. or at the very least, uh, increase the taxes so uh, it's just no longer viable or ring fence the major cities where you currently have a housing crisis. Yeah. Because that can only mean more homes for Australians uh, and it can only mean reducing the pricing of housing, not increasing it. Yeah, it's really important there, and thanks for doing that, distinguishing between foreign buyers and new migrants. New migrants are, are looking for a home to live in and they're often buying and yeah. living in it. You're talking about foreign investors, um, essentially, aren't you, that aren't that's, living in these well, homes? Right. Yeah, and it's all those things. So you've got foreign investors that put pressure by buying um, new homes that actually can be occupied by uh, locals and they're only buying it to make a few dollars. But then you yeah, also have high, really high level of migration, which we actually talked about before, and I think that needs to be brought down. Um, I mean, the one thing the New South Wales government has been really good at is putting taxes. So it doesn't surprise me that they're actually put a tax. <laughs> Seems uh, like a backhanded compliment there, Frank, to be well, honest. Well, they're very good at that, right, I've got to say, because um, actually their housing policy isn't a housing policy at all. It's actually a third world planning policy what they're actually proposing by rezoning the whole of New South Wales. It's actually a taxation policy mm. because what's going to happen through the, through the proposals that the Minsk government is proposing is the value of general will actually increase all the valuations on paper of everyone's homes. So in essence, the New South Wales government will collect more taxes uh, through their land taxes. This is what this is all about. Oh, because so, if you but... want more homes, you've got to make them more affordable, not more expensive, Laura. Well, it's also about supply and demand, isn't it? If you build more homes, that means oh, demand yeah. is is going eventually. But, I mean, it's not going to happen but, for decades. But the New South Wales government isn't building one new home. Um, actually, the New South Wales government's built less homes of any government in Australia when it comes to social housing. We're talking about All social... The, yeah, OK, social housing, but then and, the, the, the general market's a different thing altogether, right? But, but we have. The, 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 the allegations by the government there's not enough councils are not allowing enough homes is complete rubbish. That might be in the eastern suburbs, and I support what they're doing in the eastern suburbs. I'm not against that. Um, I can assure you, Laura, the Todds weren't invented uh, with, the, with the New South Wales government. We've been building high-rise all across Western Sydney. <clears throat> if you go from Parramatta... Campbelltown, all those areas are already zoned 24 floors. What we are against is putting just housing for a third world policy. And all they're doing is rezoning the whole state so they can increase the land tax grab. Because in Fairfoot alone, which is a small city, we have 20,000 homes ready to go to be built. The fact is that no one's building because it's not affordable. And if you look at the interest rates, if you look at history, history gives you the facts. Yeah, how, in does 2000, the, how does the federal government fix that? You know, if it's not, if the numbers don't stack up for developers, we're in a real pickle here. Well, developers are leaving the housing market in droves. That's right. Because quite simply, it's not because there's not enough supply for them to build, it's too expensive to build and there's too many taxes. And at the same time, we have very high interest rates. Mm. If you go back in 2008 and 2009, yeah. and we were building a lot of homes, interest rates went up, migration went up, that caused inflation, so interest mm. rates went up. And we went down from two, building 250, 300,000 homes to actually 100,000 homes. Yeah. And yeah. since 2009, we've gone all the way up to building 500,000 homes per year in this mm. country. But what people are not talking about is that the interest rates dropped and the migration stabilised. Now what we've got in 2023, serious increase in migration, high inflation, high interest rates. Who can afford to buy a home? And you have the federal government that's got a tax called the yeah. GST, 
which means the more expensive a house gets, the more tax intake they take and the more expensive it makes for first home buyers. As I've said before, yeah. tax off the homes and give our, our children, our first home buyers, a chance to own a home. The uh, then there's a couple of things you mentioned there. Uh, migration, not in the state government's control, and they have been pushing around the edges. Fine. Um, inflation and interest rates, also out of the state government's control. What they do have control over is tax taxes. And I put to you, Frank, that that is still uh, pretty fringe when, it, when you look at the base cost, the supply chain issues, uh, what inflation has done to the cost of materials. The reason why people go and look at the facts. The reason why people are not building interest rates are too high. People can't afford to borrow. Yeah, that's people right. can't afford to pay the but, prices. But what I'm saying but, is that's not the fault of the state government. So, uh, like, how do the you state get government? Over that well, I agree. It problem. needs to be. It needs to be collaboration between local, state, and federal. I agree all yeah. of that. And I'm happy to put my money in my mouth, and I'll be making a major announcement very soon about it because I want to show them up. I want to show how bad our state and federal governments are. How much taxes they reap off the misery of first home buyers. And as a local government, as a local mayor, if I want to preach that way, I should actually take the lead. Okay. I'm going to do that shortly. But the when, point I want to make... You, hang point on, hang I want on, to hang make, on. I don't want to bury the lead here, Frank. Major announcement. Well, My ears prick. I will do that. We'll do that very soon, right? So uh, the point I want to make is... or in the next couple of weeks? Oh, in the next two, 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 two three weeks. Yeah, OK. Two, uh, we're working through some, some things at the moment. OK. You just... Uh, but the point is, we all want to help get... first-time buyers. Will you uh, step up, perhaps, to federal politics, Frank? Uh, no, I'm just stepping up for my community. I'm stepping up. I mean, the federal election is only... Well, how long away is it? Who knows? We don't even know. Uh, there's a major redistribution <laughs> happening at the moment. We don't yeah. know. They, they run... but let's, let's see what happens. At the moment, all I'm saying is I see local communities struggling. People okay. can't afford to pay rents. They can't afford to put a roof over their heads. The government's got this wrong. They're profiteering... In Canada, they rebate the GST, they rebate the taxes. Here they give you a paltry $20,000, 30000 dollars $50,000 off but what they, with one hand, but what they're not telling you is they're charging 100 people with the other. Make it more affordable for, for first-time buyers. Give our children a chance, Laura. It's our children we all worry about, and housing should not be taxed, just like we don't tax water, we don't tax food, um, the essentials, that should not be So will you run for federal politics and take the fight to Canberra? I'm doing and I'm fighting from Fairfield. Uh, who knows? I've got to Canberra very often, but uh, that's something to consider later on. And I work very closely with Dai Lee, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we already have our federal party. We're talking through a few different things. But look, ultimately, it's all about my community. That's not the reason why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I want to shed some light. But it's, uh, it's Western Sydney that actually provides most of the housing. 65% of the housing under the New South Wales government documents will already go to Western Sydney. That's where people are going to come because that's where it's more affordable. What I'm saying is let's make it more affordable. Take the taxes away. Okay. Let's work together. Let's, let's provide housing. And, Laura, one of the things that the government won't say is that Fairfield Council, which is a small council, we have 8,000 homes rezoned that's been sitting on the Department of Planning's desk hmm. for three years. They haven't done anything about it. They haven't approved it. And many other councils in Western Sydney are in the same position. So for them, it just seems like it's more about the tax intake than about putting a roof over someone's head. Are you going to come back on AM Agenda and make that announcement? <laughs> uh, we'll see. We're working through it now. Look, look, we are working through some policy in the, as a local council All right. uh, because we think that we can take a lead rather than just being reactive. Mm -hmm. And I think if we want to talk about things, we should take a lead. We should show right. up the other levels of government. So we'll do it very soon. Okay. I'm happy to come on once I announce it. Uh, after? Well, you've just uh, promised our viewers and me I need, so I much need the, I need the council endorsement before I can announce it. Oof, OK. Well, we'll see you soon. We'll hold you to it. We work very collaboratively here in Fairfield. Look at the councillors. <laughs> okay. The All so, right, good. We'll see once you I get soon. the tip, we'll do that. All right. Keep us posted. Thanks so I much, will. Frank. Thank you.